when we last gathered, the party started out on the first of what may or may not be many, many missions as they work as hard as they can to deal with the surface level of the cult. And after a small bit of sneaking around and expertly with a few screw-ups, uh, picking off enemies one by one, uh, the party made their way to their first location. Additionally, before the mission even began, uh, Mel was greeted by a small fairy. And this fairy had been drawn to her and had been looking for her for ages and they finally made contact with each other. Uh, this fairy of ours, who named themselves Alora, is, as of now, incredibly timid, almost scared of just about everything, and is completely unintelligible to the rest of the party. And going forward from there, when the group made their way to their mission location, they battled someone who claimed themselves to be a high-ranking captain of the cult. And her name was Yuza. And the party wasted no time at all engaging in combat with her because she was the one who tried to throw the first hit. And as the battle raged on, the group noticed that the other enemies that were present weren't focusing on them whatsoever. Their attention was instead zeroed in on these other portals that were in the room. And once Yuza had suffered a significant amount of battle damage for a moment, it appeared that something was incredibly, incredibly wrong with her. And when her weapon was knocked out of her hand, it was then discovered that there was a possession of sorts taking place with her as half of her was fighting for her autonomy back and the other half was trying to regain and claim control. But once she was very quickly subsequently defeated via Yashua unveiling what he truly was to everyone except Henry and using his burst mode for the very first time, and Dreva being inspired by Yashua to use hers, even though she hadn't done that in quite some time and overexhausted herself, everything was said and done. And as the group were examining uh, the three individual portals, one of which contained a harrowing sight of bodies and uh, large splatters of blood shown across the floor and the walls. One of them seemingly was just an expansive void of nothing of sort. And the last one contained what appeared to be a treasure chest being reflected in a mirror on the inside. And as an investigation plan was being determined, Henry, in his haste, decided to run straight through the portal that contained the chest and as a result he stepped on a magic circle that not only immediately threw him back outside of the portal but he was cursed by a demon known as Diablos and when he looked at the party and the party looked at him they all saw a very brief flash of this creature and it caused Dreva to become incredibly concerned and she freaked out for a moment and ordered him to stay away from her. When Zero called to get an update about everything that was going on, he was given the relevant information, but when the curse was mentioned, 
he dropped his phone. And when he picked it back up, the only thing that came out of his mouth was, What the fuck did you just say? And from there, our story will continue. So I said Henry was possessed by something called Diablos. Okay. All right. Um you want to explain how that happened and before you answer that, when you say possessed, is he moving unnaturally or is there something showing that he's possessed in whatever capacity that means? Dravo mentioned a curse mark on him. Oh, yeah. And he came he came out of this portal thing. Oh, you've gotta be fucking kidding me. If there's Diablos coming out of the portals. I don't want to know what's behind door number three and door number two. <sighs> shit, shit, shit. As you can hear Zell swear repeatedly on the other side of the phone. And Cynthia speaks to you through the communicators. Um, why is he freaking out? What happened? decided it would be a good idea to explore the portal without any precau any precautions and he got I I don't know if possessed it's a proper term but he got cursed by Diablos he got cursed by who here uh, we go again oh god damn it okay don't leave that building Roselia, Zeril, and I are on our way. Don't leave. Should I quarantine the building then? In whatever capacity you can, yes. Alrighty then. And the communicator line is cut. The phone is hung up. And they will be there very, very soon. And Dreva is gripping her staff in such a manner that her knuckles are turning whiter than her skin itself, somehow. And it looks as if, at a moment's notice, she is ready to start slinging spells just in case she has to. Okay, um, alright, this is what we're gonna do. I'm going to quarantine the building. Drava, I'm going to ask nicely. Keep your eye on Henry. Make sure he doesn't do any anything else stupid. And if you want to blow him up, then you can. Oh, rest assured, I've got all of my eyes on him. As Drava is very menacingly watching Henry's every movement. You could uh, sit in the corner over there and think about what you've done. Henry slowly inches towards Drava. And Drava casts Blizzard on you, or on your oh. feet. <laughs> oh dear. I told right. you to stay away from me, and I goddamn mean it. Okay, well, well, you two are having fun over there. I'm going to walk outside the building and make sure that no one gets inside. We can't have this Diablos cursing anybody else. Yashua makes his leap. Just walks out. All right. Can I control this? I, can't. I forgot to toggle that for your tokens. Just use your regular one for now. Copy. 
There you go. Alright. So, you are... Let me move... Move the scene back outside. Henry walks back and puts his ass on the summoning circle. You cannot move. Your feet are frozen to where you are currently standing. Okay, then I'm going to try to thaw my feet out. <laughs> With a little fire. Before you do that... Okay, you are outside of the building. What is it that you wish to do? Or rather, before you answer that... How do you intend on quarantining this place? That's a good question. I was gonna just pick up some debris and just create a small... You know, like... Like a barricade kind of thing? Yeah, a barricade, there you go. Small barricade to... Let everyone know, uh, can can get in here. Okay. That works. And I'll... And I'll also be, like, standing in front of the entrance in the Eidolon form, just to be sure that no one gets the bright idea to walk in. <laughs> okay. Alright. Uh, so while you do that, well, let's say... Let's say you doing that takes about six minutes. Okay. Alright. So, back inside the building, you said you're trying to do what? Help the ice with a little fire on my finger. <laughs> okay. Every every time you intend to do that, Drava slings Aroga 3 at one hand and Blizzard at the other. Are you trying to kill me, Drava? <laughs> if I have to, I will. Do you, do you just... Do you... The gravity of our now situation is... Well, based on my reaction, it's pretty fucking bad. So, I would prefer if I took every single precautionary measure that I could in order to prevent this from getting worse. And when she says that, it looks as if that, for a moment, the crystal sitting at the top of her staff, opposite of the bladed side of her staff, is glowing a different type of color that it does when she normally uses her magic and she continues to speak and she says god damn it man did you not even think for a second that just running inside without a plan could have I don't know backfired could have gotten you killed could have gotten you hurt like do you just have zero caution for anything? Henry just falls down on his butt with his feet still frozen. And Drava she scoffs uh, mutters something under her breath and then creates further distance between you and her. Alright. So after that, we'll say about... Say about six minutes have gone by. And... On the outside, where Yashua is, he sees... Zero Cynthia and... Roselia pulling up and Zero looks around and he says, What the hell is this? This is n This is one hell of a barricade, but Gaia be damned. Whoa. And Joshua replies, You 
You told me that Diabolos was extremely dangerous, so I thought it was a good idea to quarantine the location. Zero looks around and says, Who the fuck? Where is he? And then Cynthia points, Um, I think that's him. And Zero says, There's no fucking way. Is that you? Yashua sighs, but when he sighs, you see, like, vents coming out of the helmet. Yes, it's me. Don't, do not be alarmed. It's... It... Okay, put it to you like this. I'm not alarmed, but I'm in a surprise state of shock because I... Listen, you look as human as human can be, not whatever this is. But we can we can play 101 questions later. We got to take a look at this shit. And that being said, Yashua stands aside and lets them in. Yep. So Zero enters Lacine. Followed by Cynthia and Roselia. And the two ladies take a look at the portals. And then they look over to see a partially frozen Henry. And Roselia takes one look at him. And she's, oh my god. This is, this is worse than what I thought it was going to be. And Zero, <laughs> in his frustration, says, What the fuck do you mean it's worse than what you thought it was going to be? I need explanations right now. Because you told, you. <sighs> and Zero tries to calm himself down. Uh, Allura flies over to them and she doesn't say anything because she is aware that only Mel can understand her when she speaks but she flies an emotion that more or less says come this way so they Follow the small life form over. And Rosalia begins to explain. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to make this quick. So one of the demons that has been their secondary goal to summon and bring forth into a plane of existence. Its name, as you know, is called Diablos. And this particular creature can be attached to a host through one of two means. Option one, they are forcefully bonded to a person through a ritual. Option two. Someone makes physical contact in whatever capacity that might be. It could be from your hair, your eyelashes, your fingernail. It doesn't fucking matter. They make contact with it and the instant contact is made. The curse transfers over into the host and it will very slowly begin to take them over and every time depending on the level of the curse every time the host is looked at they will see a brief image of Diablos himself before it vanishes away and as for 
the person who unfortunately happens to be his host within about and Rosalia looks over at Henry one more time oh dear um within about a week's time if the curse is not lifted either through a very very potent ritual spell or the person who created the curse and brought it into this plane of existence is killed Diablos' host will take complete control of that person's body if it doesn't already happen prior to that and will use them as a conduit to not only steal the souls of as many people as possible in order to increase its strength um it will then spawn several smaller hive mind versions of itself to wreak havoc on any and every living creature until only diablos is left And the reason I said that it was worse than what I thought it was going to be, because there are three different levels. Level one of this curse is just a simple eye on the host's forehead. Level two is that that eye is half closed. And the higher the level of the curse, the higher the danger that the host and everyone around the host faces. And option three, that eye is bleeding. Though not physically bleeding, the, the marking of the eye appears to be bleeding, which is what is currently on Henry's fucking forehead. So, now we are on a very strict time limit we either get rid of the cult before a week and a half passes or we have to kill henry oh option one sounds good <laughs> am i still in the room yes you you re-entered the area when uh, Zero, Cynthia, and Rosalia went inside. Mm. Yashua in the Eidolon form is tempted to go with option one. Or wait, which one was option, option one two. killing him? Option two is killing me. Yeah, option two was oh. killing Henry. Oh, okay. And option option two will solve our problems in an instant as I glare at Henry. How dare you? <laughs> and Drava very slowly points her staff at Henry and by by that gesture, that is her way of saying agreed. And Zero Button says, wait, 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 slow down. Hopefully. We don't have to kill him. Hopefully. Thank you, Sarah. Before I say what I'm about to say next. Dragon horns. Is there anything else we need to know? And Rosario looks through. Dra dragon horns? What the fuck? I have a name. Whatever. Um. Periodically. <laughs> Diablos will telepathically and spiritually speak to its host if the host can well successfully resist or flat out ignore what diablos is saying to them the curse will not progress any faster if even for a fraction of a second henry pays attention to what Diablos is trying to say to him, the curse will progress at an exponentially faster pace. 
and the only other thing I know, and I've seen this with my own eyes, and it's I still have nightmares over it. Someone that I used to be very close to, that got afflicted with this curse, actively had conversations with Diablos, and he turned within 12 hours. So, that is my way of saying, and before Rosalia finishes our sentence, she pulls her, her right sleeve back, she slowly raises her arm, the markings that you see that you saw earlier on her arms begin to glow, and the higher her arm goes, Henry also lifts up into the air, and she says, under no circumstances should you ever be fucking talking to him. Do you understand? So if he's talking, don't talk back. Yes. Sounds good to me. Okay. Glad we're on the same page. And she puts Henry down. Oh, lastly, um, do not, and I cannot stress this enough, do not touch him ever until this curse is dealt with. You can touch him via magic, the way I just did with my magic hand, but if you physically touch him, don't even think about what may or may not happen. Got it? Do we learn that spell? Is it that contagious? <laughs> yes. It is that bad. This is... This is... A, this is a different kind of dark magic. D Demonic doesn't even begin to describe the level of... of, 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 of bad shit that this thing is. I would love to give you a written out essay encyclopedia of it, but we obviously don't have the time for that. And Yashua, I don't mean to be rude, I'm just panicking because I've seen this before. I don't blame you for panicking. Okay. Now then, I do have uh, an experimental spell, an item that may or may not impede this progress. At the very least, I can cast a magical shell over his body. So that way he can at least touch things that are not actual people. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to sit down right where I'm standing and begin this ritual. Cynthia, if I could have a bit of your assistance, that would be lovely. So those two get to working on the ritual. And Zero, he speaks up, and he says, I can't fucking believe this happened. Oh, uh, why? Why during such an important fucking mission, too? Oh, Chief is not gonna like this. Yashua looks at him at it. And says, I mean, you could always... He just glocks his rifle. I mean... If push comes to shove, that's what we're gonna have to do. As much as I'd... Rather not... Have to bury him. At least now, anyway. Um, at least now, what? <laughs> the longer we can keep him alive... I suppose the better. 
I'm curious. You guys are talking it... like I'm already dead here. Is it possible to destroy Diablos altogether? Uh, Rosalia speaks up mid chat. You'll have to be extremely lucky not to kill the host as you do that. As mm. not only will you be destroying Diablos, you will also be breaking the host's physical and literal spirit. Is there any way of transferring his spirit, his this to someone else? Like that body over there? And Zero says, why the fuck would you want to do that? So I don't die. <laughs> Honestly, that doesn't sound like a bad idea. Just transport Diablo into that body and destroy the body. Yeah, she's laying right there. I'm pretty sure she has half of him in him already. And Drava speaks up. Um... Did you happen to forget the part where she was already fighting a possession within herself? Yeah, let's fight, make them fight each other inside her. <laughs> I don't think that would work when the host is already dead. Yeah, but the possession is still going on over there. And as you look over to Yuzla's unconscious body, you can very you can see her in very clear physical distress as she is writhing back and forth fighting in a very clear internal battle oh i thought she was dead <laughs> wow she wow she's tougher than she lets on yeah i didn't say you uh you killed her last session no you didn't that's why yashua said that mm -hmm. harry just looks at her is there any way we could transfer this to her? <laughs> it's her doing. Wait. No, you... no, 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 no. You brought this on yourself. Wait, you said if we kill the person who created this. Looks over at her. How do you... <clears throat> Zero says... How do you know she's the one who made it? She's still alive? Might as well give it a try. <laughs> hmm... Uh, Drava looks over and she says, I didn't see any particular markers except for those thorns that came out of her. Uh, Rosalia, is there a way to know if someone is the creator of the curse? And she says, the only way to know is that they're wearing a very particular type of necklace and if they're missing an eye. Is that woman missing an eye and wearing a eye-shaped necklace? She had two different color eyes. That doesn't mean she was missing an eye. Could somebody have transplanted a different eye? What, like After? an artificial eye? Yeah. No, because... Rug. Oh, I, I should have clarified it. And by the way, as Rosalie is speaking to you, her eyes are closed. She is sitting with her legs folded and she is making a very wide array of erratic hand signs as she's working on this ritual. When I say that they are missing an eye, and I should have clarified this the moment it came out of my mouth, I mean that whatever I that is missing it has to physically be empty it has to be an empty eye socket there has to be nothing there ah i see now in order to cast a spell you have to pay a price yes and What's that? if you say that she has two different colored eyes and that she was possessed by something and thorns um whatever she's dealing with she's not the one who made the curse circle so whoever cursed her, cursed, created my curse. I'm not going to say no, but it is a plausible thought. You think she'll help us if we save her too? Um, that is something you will have to test at your earliest convenience, because I can't answer that. Earliest convenience, I have one week to live. <laughs> yeah, you'll be fine. 
Yeshua just shrugs. You've gone through worse. <sighs> okay. All right. Dragon horns. How much longer is that ritual gonna take? Why are you suddenly calling me Dragon Horns? You've been calling me by my name since you've met me. And Cynthia speaks up and says, That's his way of showing that he trusts you by giving you an unnecessary and unwarranted nickname. <sighs> yeah, hurry up, Dragon Horns. I need to get this curse off. Uh, Call me that one more time, and I will let you die. It's not my fault you're in this mess. And as to answer Zero, give me two more minutes. I'm almost done. Channeling the appropriate amount of energy that I need. Okay. And Zero looks over to the party. And he says, alright. So, let's get the elephant out of the room. Or in this case... The giant fucking machine that I thought was a human. Um. Elephant. <laughs> so. The city is in a. Quite a bit of a crazy fucking panic right now. And. I'm going to recommend as to listen to the better half of my judgment. That you probably don't walk around like this. But, your life, your power, I suppose, and you do whatever you want. But, as for this location, there is an informant of mine who has, what he told me, something pretty fucking helpful for you all. So, I am going to send you to a hidden bar. And when I say hidden, I quite literally mean underground. I'm going to send you to a place called the Hooked Wire. Once you get there, tell them that Blonde Emerald Eyes sent you. And from there... The rest will be handled accordingly. Yashua yeah, just shrugs. Fair enough. He just snaps his fingers. And he just goes back to his human form. But like, to everyone else, it looks like he's like glitching in and out. Like all distorting and shit. Uh-huh. Uh, here... Here's a good way to uh, reference you, Riku. You know, uh, Death and Request. Oh, yeah. You know how the characters glitch in and out? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's what's going on with him. All right. Okay, so you do that. And Zero says, you know, I'm going to be honest. When all this is said and done... You have to let me study you. Please. He's the trade you... secret. You're not allowed to. Unfortunately, even if you were to study me, this technology is way leagues ahead of you. Fuck. Fine. Though... I'll be nice and give you this. Wait, I don't even know if I could give him this. What are you trying to give him? A fragment of uh, my armor. Hmm. Does that require you switching back to your Eidolon form? Uh... Yeah, that's the problem. I'll just say, you know what? Next time I'll give you a little treat. Mm, I'll allow it this one time. 
that you can uh, insta switch and give them what you were gonna give them. All right. I just show him the transformation. I go from human to Eidolon. Mm -hmm. And then I just rip a, a chunk out of my shoulder or like a piece of my shoulder. It's not painful, if you're wondering. And just, he like flicks it like a quarter at him. Hmm. Wow. Thanks a ton. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have a real fun time analyzing this. And when he says that, you both see and feel an explosive wave of magic come from Roselia's body. And she says, Okay, I have finished channeling what I needed to channel. Now, Cynthia, as I cannot move, lest the energy that I spent this time accumulating is lost, I need you, and I'm sorry in advance, I need you to reach into my robe and grab my helix crystal. She says, okay, but where is it? And she says, half of it is in my hair. The other half is... She whispers it to her. Oh, no. And... Cynthia turns a bit red for a quick second, and she, faster than you expect her to move, grabs one half of it out of her hair, and grabs the other half out of her shirt with her tail. Okay. Now what? I need you to, to hold it at arm's length in front of me. Okay. Cynthia. She holds the crystal in front of Roselia. And the energy slowly begins to transfer out from Roselia's body into the crystal. And the longer this process continues, the more and more physically exhausted Roselia becomes and when it is done the crystal appears to be incredibly unstable as you see beams of magic energy begin to shoot out of it left and right and Cynthia damn near drops the thing and she's in Roselia then says quick throw it at Henry as hard as you can <laughs> do I have the choice to duck this <laughs> no. <laughs> Let me throw it. <laughs> I just stuck to the floor at the moment. So. And Cynthia wastes zero time following that order that she was given. And to ensure ensure that she isn't going to miss, she places a crystal in her tail and she launches it right at Henry while it's in midair Henry goes is this going to oh. <laughs> so the crystal hits you the crystal explodes upon contact and each of the individual pieces begin to flow and swirl around your body until they ultimately coalesce where your where the curse mark on your forehead is. And you can feel each and every individual piece attaching itself to your skin and lining the curse itself. It also latches on to bits and pieces of your hair, your hands, and your feet. And Roselia, she struggles to stand up, and she says, <sighs> Okay. 
That... If I did that right... That should have bought you at least... Two more days. If the mission isn't handled by then. Also, while I still don't recommend it... While you still can't touch people and living creatures... You can touch physical objects without spreading traces of the curse to whatever you touch. And just as Rosalia is getting ready to say something else, she falls to the floor from fatigue. Is she out cold or is she just laying there? She is tired as fuck. So she's still awake, yeah, she, right? Yeah, she's still conscious, but she's she's panting and she's breathing like she just finished running three marathons back to back. Can I go over and ask her a question? Um, I would say yes, but you're still bound to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure all those shards shattered everything because they had to attach themselves to me. And did I say that the ice broke? Yeah, I, I melt the ice with fire. <laughs> I don't know. Drevo's ice is pretty damn cold. I'm going to say that... The fire that you cast was enough to stand to your feet. But you still can't walk. I just want to learn that ability that she did to grab me and pick me up. That's it. Uh, so what, you want to be a Jedi now? No, I just need it in case I go flying at somebody. So I can push myself off of them. Without touching them. It's a matter of safety for you guys. Is hmm. that allowed? Well, again, I would say yes, but she's too fucking tired. You can ask her later, but most certainly not now. Uh, <laughs> I want it before the mission. <laughs> the mission is still ongoing. It, ha it hadn't stopped or anything. Okay, so when are we leaving? Because I'm... I have a very short time limit on my life. <laughs> Are you asking that to... Everybody! <laughs> uh, Drava, she speaks up and she says, Well, if... If whatever Rosalia did holds up, I suppose we can... Go ahead and make our way to... Wherever it... Wherever Zell said we were supposed to be going. And, uh, Alora looks at everyone, looks at Henry, and immediately flies into, uh, Mel's hair. And Zero says, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call some guys, I'm gonna have them examine these portals, and continue to hunker this place down. Just in case, you all might have missed something. We now, most likely did, since we couldn't explore the other two. Right. Do you want to jump in one? <laughs> I'll pass. I'm currently organic, so I'm going to catch something. Do you want a hug? <laughs> Do you want to die? <laughs> Alright, so, you all leave this place, and as you all pile out, uh, Dreva just glares at Henry, and it looks as if, at a moment's notice, she would just throw a spell at your face in order to force you to maintain distance. 
You know, Drava, if you glare any harder, you're going to burn his skin. Oh, trust. If I knew how to cast fire with my eyes, I would. Anyway, so you all pile out. And you are standing right outside. <coughs> Henry, five kilometers away from the, everybody else. Of the uh, establishment. Uh, for positioning's sake, please place your tokens at the top of the map. Except for Henry. Yes, except for Henry. Henry will be right here. <laughs> Where's Drew? Henry, I'll have you in gunpoint. Okay. Now then. This... Did he... He said it was underground, but... He didn't really... Give us... A location of where to go. Are we supposed to just... Figure it out? Or something? Or we could ask him through the communicator. Yeah, we should probably do that. Hey, Zero, uh, <laughs> you never told us where to go. Huh? Oh, um, shit. I thought I did. Okay, um, you leave this place, go left, uh, not left, go west. West from where you're standing, and then... You're going to travel north for a bit. And you should see one of my drones. And when you see that, follow it. And it'll take you where you need to go. Oh, well, thanks, I guess. Well, let's, uh, let's get a move on, as whatever is waiting for us that's supposed to help us. Apparently, it's supposed to be something good. So, you all take your leave, and you find yourself at an another city crossroad. Though, this time when you do get here, uh, you can see people running in hysteria. You can see crashed cars, broken windows. Uh, you can see some injured people trying to make break for it. You see some people bleeding. You see some people... Um, clutching their arms in seemingly torment. Uh, you see people who look as if they are incredibly sick. And you also see um, <clears throat> some parents and their children um, huddling all together in complete and utter fear. Many times I've seen civilians in fear like this. I've seen this side far too many times and I still can't get used to it. Well, um, I don't really think this is something you're supposed to get used to. Granted, um, you know, with you and your background having been in the military and such it's understandable that you've seen it so much but even well in my opinion I don't even think the most battle hardened veterans should get used to things like this yeah that's the problem I'm a lot more human compared to my uh, peers the rest of the Eidolons that I work with are a lot more cold-blooded. They lack emotion. It's, pro it's probably because they lived for thousands of years. I'm still young. 
Are you? Yes. I'm 40. I ain't young. Size. Anyways. We should, uh... We should call Zero and let them know that there are civilians here that need some assistance. Yeah, we... We should. Um... You do that. I'm going to go... Heal some of the injured. And, uh, Drava... Immediately runs to the... Opposing side of the street and begins... Casting Cure on everyone that she can. Henry just clings to the wall because he doesn't want to contaminate anybody. Anyways, I call Zero again. You guys get lost again? No, no. Uh, I don't know what you're doing over there, but uh, we're going to need... Uh, we're going to need some medical staff and medical support here. There are a lot of civilians that are hurt. Fuck figures. And I think and I think there are some civilian casualties too. Can you Can you give me an estimate of how many uh units we'll have to send over? And by units, I mean transportation vehicles. Here. Do I have to do a perception roll? Yes. Alright. Let's see here. Hmm. Okay. So. You look. You survey your surroundings, and you can tell that there's about about 50 injured, two actual casualties, and about 20 other people in a hysterical panic. And as for the number of units, you guess that you should tell them to send over about about six. I would say we'll need some. Okay, we have fifty injured, two casualties, and wait, how many again? That we're in panic. Twenty. We have twenty that are. In complete panic and shock. Six units will suffice. All right. Once we finish. Actually, no. I'm forward this info to Regis right now. We're gonna get back to setting up a temporary observation base here. Thanks for the heads up. Yeah. He just cuts communications. Yep. All right. Uh, can I help Drill as well? Right. Heal the civilian since I have the cure spell as well? Yes, you may. Cool. I would ask you to help. But you are a living plague right now, so just stay in that corner there. Henry just looks at you. You're curing those guys right now while I have a ticking time bomb? You'll be fine. You have a few days left. And Dreva, she speaks up and she says, Is there a problem with that? Yes. Soon there'll be a meal for me if you guys don't hurry up.
I did three rolls because he did three rolls. Oh, that guy got instantly healed. He he. No, th this is the um little anim. Remember when I told you I bought a whole bunch of animated effects off roll twenty. Yeah. Yeah, this is the the thing for cure. This little spinny white circle. So yeah, uh, the last cure was a nat twenty. So that guy got cured of cancer and everything. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Man's out here with the super heels. Alright, so after... After quite a bit of time, we'll say... We'll say that the two of you spent... 30 minutes... Uh, healing the external wounds... Of... Those that you could get to within that time. As... They all... Uh, Thank you immensely, and they try to offer you some form of compensation, of which Draver turns all of it down. Yeah, I do as well. I don't need thanks. I'm just doing my job. Right. Are you? Are you really? Shut up, Henry. Or, or I will make sure that your time left will be zero. You want to come over here and uh, have a little touch? <laughs> so, and, when, and with that exchange being had, uh, you all slowly begin to further make your way to uh the bar I'm gonna move maps again i'm gonna need a drink after all the dumb shit that henry did <laughs> oh there's two of me cool uh delete Mm. Am I not on the map on this one? No, you are. Oh, there. Right. You're in the middle. In the middle. All right. So, you all are making your way through this alleyway now, continuing to follow Zero's instructions. And I would ask for an insight roll from everybody. Yes, because you, you all hear a voice, but you don't really, you hear a voice, but you can't determine the status of said voice. I almost did a survival roll, because I can't find it. Right, oh, nice. Roll for trailer. All right. So you, the voice that you hear, you all crane your heads until it becomes louder and louder, <clears throat> and you can hear that the voice is coming from where all the trash is in the designated trash area what here yep okay is it along the path we're supposed to go or are we going to take a little detour mm. I'm going to roll to see if I say yes or no to that. No, it is not. It is along your designated path. Alright. Well, since uh, Henry is on a time limit over here, a little our personal ticking time bomb, I think we should explore what's going on. Henry screams out loud if you guys, whoever's over there, 
doesn't come out, I'm setting you guys ablaze. Oh my god. I don't got time for this bullshit. Hmm. Henry, roll intimidation, please. <laughs> please roll a 20. Or a failure. I, it's a failure. But it's a 2, come on. Oh, it's a 7. Uh, so you say that and the owner of the voice hesitantly and frighteningly says please Please don't. I don't. I don't have. I don't have a lot of time left. Please. And when that takes place, Drava moseys over to where the origin, the original voice comes from, and just as she gets over there, she immediately backsteps away from uh, the owner of the voice. As she has her hand covering her mouth. What's going on? Do I have to look, roll to see? No, you don't. You don't have to roll to see. Uh, the sight. Okay, what am I looking at? The sight that you see is of a man, but yet this man is missing an arm is bleeding profusely from this arm and where his arm should be you see something vile festering out of his body almost as if his whatever it is it's trying to claw his way out and it is causing him even further physical pain as every time it moves you can see more and more physical scratches form on the man's body. What the f A parasite? I... I don't know what this is. I... I was running away, trying to get back to my family. And I... I, I was attacked. It was some... imp-looking thing and... I managed to fight it off, but what I thought was me killing it, it, it got up and it lunged at me and it tore me apart. And then its eyes went white. It turned into some kind of liquid. And then I've been dealing with this I, I don't know what to do. I. Please. Please. Find my family and put me out of my misery. Riku, is it possible to save this poor soul? Yes. Asuna would do anything to that parasite? Mm, I'm not going to say no. Henry cast cure on him. You're not doing anything. What if you infect him with Diablos? I can't unless I touch him. So, here. Maybe the parasite will look at me. And try to infect you, but Diablos eats the parasite. <laughs> uh, Henry, please... Give me a wisdom saving roll. Wisdom saving. Okay. There. Oh. <laughs> well, I was going to roll my d20, but I don't have to. <laughs> um. That critical failure. As you are casting Cure, you hear a whisper in your head. And him. 
and give me another wisdom saving roll, please. No, 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 no. Do not intelligence saving roll, please. Intelligence, okay. All right. Ooh. Close one. All right. <laughs> you completely ignore what Diablo said. However, as you were casting Cure, for a brief moment, the white energy coming from the palm of your hand turned green for a split second. And when that magic made contact with the affected area, it caused the man to jerk in a significantly uh, pained expression as the festering parasite began to make audible noise but it is also now visible more visible to everyone's eyes it's flying out of the guy's body it is trying to claw out of the man's body can i Roll strength to just tear out the parasite while Drava casts Q on him? Or no, doesn't work like that. Hmm. It's gonna be painful, but we could at least save his life. Instead of rolling strength, do a strength save. Alright, because it's gonna hurt me too. Gotcha. I didn't say that. Okay. I'm always getting um, that number two. <laughs> there we go. Alright. Roll to six. Okay. So. The idea sparks to your mind to attempt to forcefully remove the parasite from the man's body. And as you approach the man, you look over to Drava, and you tell her that when you begin pulling, start curing. To which she looks at you with an extremely confused expression, but she puts two and two together, and she readies her staff. Now, I'm going to ask you to roll strength six times. Gonna take six tugs? Alright. Alright. Okay, so, as you pull on what you can grip of the parasite, the more you pull, the more the man howls and screams in pure agony, but by your final pull, you do pull the creature right out of his body, and you immediately throw it at the wall behind you. While at the same time, with Drava trying her hardest to keep the man not only conscious, but alive through frantically casting Cure, the wounds on his body eventually completely close. Granted, yes, he is still missing an arm, and large chunks of his flesh but nonetheless the man is alive and 
as for the creature that you just pulled out of him, you turn around and you see it almost flickering in and out of visibility as it looks almost frightened and confused that you managed to do that but it eventually stops and resolves itself to just trying to fight you and can I just stomp it like an insect um you sure about that well, it's a small creature, is it not? Can you see it? Oh. Fuck it, roundhouse kick it then. <laughs> uh, is that is that <laughs> is that how you want to open the fight? Nah. I just want to intimidate it. See, see if it could like run away. Hmm. You want to intimidate it? Oh, roll intimidation. Scare it off, or just like w warning shots or something. Okay, we can do warning shots. Yeah. Intimidation, right? Yep. Yeah, because I don't want to waste time. Henry's about to die. Henry's what? about to walk up to this thing and touch it, just so it dies on its fucking curse. <laughs> wow, I almost rolled a 20 on Intimidation. Okay. Uh, you roll Intimidation. And you look at it, menacingly. And it tries to run away. But when it notices that it has nowhere to go, uh, it shrinks in size and it plants itself into the ground. The four blue eyes on its face turn red as it is very much intending to cause some trouble. Can I cast uh, Spike to not allow it to dig? <clears throat> uh, if it was your turn, yes. Okay. Deciding what attack you're going to use. Did Chris DC? No, it's you. No, it's your turn. It's my turn? No, it's... Yeah. It's it's Yashua's turn. It's Ting's turn. Oh. I thought you said that you are going to use Earth Spike. That's no, why I said, okay, it, go. No, he said it's not my turn, so it's still your turn. All right. I'll just tell the viewers I was going through technical difficulties. <laughs> Time will count on that. Okay. I'm going to put a shiny ward on Henry because I don't want him infecting anyone. There we go. <clears throat> All right. Let me 
just uh, input this shield. Da da da. da, da, da. Make sure it shows. Okay. And now... There you go, Henry. You get your own quarantine bubble. <laughs> oh, excuse me. You're excused, my friend. Always. Except you, Henry. You're a piece of shit. I'm gonna right. come over there and touch you. And we'll be both in the same boat. You have dealt with your attack and turned 2,899 damage. Damn. I hit like a truck. Jeez, I need a leaper skill so I can see things. Alright. While you guys are doing your turn, I'm gonna go get more food. Alright. Because nature calls. Okay, and with Dravis' turn, uh, looking at the disgusting creature, as it is. Well, it is green and kind of plant like. It's. Physical appearance is more of a fleshy, zombie-like kind of appearance. And the eyes on its face, they all blink one at a time. They don't blink in unison like your average life form's eyes do. And... Upon looking at it for longer than what she would prefer to, she begins casting a fire spell, but she specifically aims this attack at the enemy's face, as she just can't stand to be looking at something like that. And then, she is going to cast Blizzard to put out the flames that have been afflicted upon the enemy. But by doing so, she is going to cause the target to become wet. And for her last action, she is going to... Look at Henry. She's going to look at the creature. She's going to look back at Henry. And she's going to cast Siphon on the enemy. Okay. Now, before I tell you the amount of damage she did, um, the target is wet. And for that, I will use... Hmm. I guess I'll use this icon. And Road Twin doesn't really have a... Have a something that says wet, so... Yeah, let's use that. <clears throat> it's wet with fire. <laughs> Liquid oh, no. fire. Did Drava's attack hurt its eyes at all? Uh, yes. What? Two of the eyes are now no longer there. Okay. I want to test something. I want to see how afflicted I am with this curse. Can I grapple straight to his face and grab him and electrocute him? Oh my god. 
You're gonna curse him too. I want to see what it does to other organics. Might as well see if I can use it as an attack. The curse. Uh, before I give my answer on that, okay. Drava dealt. Uh. 1,545 damage to it and you said you want to grapple the thing and then yeah. hold myself to it grabbing its face and electrocuting it we're testing this <laughs> hmm. um... we're breaking new ground boys I'll allow it. You'll allow it? Okay. <laughs> oh no. What have you done, Riku? Don't worry about it. <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. Mm. Did you forget oh, I have the shining ward on me too, Rick? He's gonna be inside your shining ward. That's okay, I have the other barrier too. Well, since you're gonna grab him and he's inside the Shining War, not only he's gonna get electrified, but he's also gonna start burning because he's inside the Shining War. And curse! <laughs> I never said that. Oh. Okay, let's see. What do I have to roll, Riku? Uh. Roll strength. Okay. okay, now roll wisdom. One off of that. One off. Yeah. Hmm. Alright. Okay, so as you approach the creature, you again hear a whisper. The whisper says, Tear its face off! And now please give me a... Wisdom save roll. Yo, this Diablos needs to mind his own business. <laughs> okay. Hello, darkness smile. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, you ignore Diablos this time again. And now I'm going to roll this. Alright. When you make the physical contact with the creature, every part of its body that you can see that is green immediately changes to the color purple. Oh. And it is violently trying to swipe and swing at you. Yasha is like observing and taking notes. Huh, so he really is contagious. Oh. Do I have to roll, uh, a activate my jolt spell? Or sp spark? Uh. I I spark. You said you're gonna electrocute her, right? Yeah. That would be spark. And as you do that, you feel an unknown brief stint of inspiration and bewilderment and you look at your other hand and for whatever reason your hand is literally sparkling <laughs> and you point it at the enemy and a second spell Albeit something that 
appears to be a lot weaker, comes flying out of your hand and smacks the creature in the face. And with that, you have now come to the realization that your secondary power has been awakened. And now you have the dual oh. casting property of the Battle Mage. So do I put my second hand in just... You are hitting the enemy with Jolt. A second one. Yep. It's Jolt. Oof. Half damage of half damage. Yikes. Well, it still hits because you're right next to the thing, so there's no possible you could miss that, but... That's half damage of half damage. Yeah, yeah, that, that's half damage, but... That's unfortunate. It's half damage on your weaker spell. Right. It, it's a double half damage, so whatever's half of that, another half. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, you're just hitting him with a taser. Basically. Yeah, you sure did uh, do 31 damage with that jolt spell. Oh my god. Amazing. <laughs> So it's... And unfortunately, uh, because of its natural defenses, uh, you did no damage. <laughs> Doesn't the Shining Ward come into effect now too? Since he's standing inside my ward distance. Oh yeah, it, it, it takes the, the 100 damage from Shining Ward contact, but as for your attacks, Nothing. Okay. Does it react to my curse from my hands? Uh, it became changed color. Immensely more aggressive when you touched it. So not only did it change color, uh, it's very, very angry and bloodthirsty. Is that the end of my whole turn? Yes. As for the enemy... Uh, let's see. Uh, please roll strength, Henry. Okay. Mine is not going to ever reach anything that high, so... Oh. <laughs> Alright, so as the creature is jerking itself around trying to free itself from your grip, it pulls itself away in such a manner that not only does it uproot itself, it also literally tears its own face off trying to get away from you. So am I holding its face? You have its face in your hand. Hunting trophy. Joshua suggests. Mask of the parasite. <laughs> Throw that thing away. That thing could be contagious. Henry pockets it. <laughs> of course. We can get Cyril to test it. Yeah, I suppose. Wait, Zero, no, give it to Regis. He might find a vaccine for it. Maybe help this guy. Drava speaks up. She says, Actually, why don't you split in half? Give one half to Zero, give one half to Regis. Smart idea, Would That's you a like good idea. Take it from my hand. I'm not touching that fucking thing. <clears throat> what are you, crazy? Yashua anyway. just... Yashua just rips the other half and just digitizes it. Okay. Can I do that? Yeah. Cool. Can't you, can't you just send it straight to Regis? Um... Physically, Regis is quite far away. 
Nor does Regis have a a digitizer because the only one in Palamecia with the digitizer at the moment is Yashua. Okay. Give both halves to Yashua to hold on to. I don't need it parasiting me. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. With the with the digitizer, it's <laughs> it's stuck in stasis. Okay. Can we kill this thing now? Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, we got a sample out of it, so we could, you know, get rid of it now. I'm, I'm kind of running out of time here. <laughs> You'll be fine. Uh, Jay says, by all means, um, we got something unexpected out of this, so I don't want to look at something that's literally faceless and bleeding. So if you could do us a big favor and get rid of it, that'd be great. Uh, you have, you're out of actions now? Yeah, I, I did that super action. Mm -hmm. you. Okay. In that case, it should be my turn, right? Or is it Dravos? It's your turn. Alright, cool. In that oh. case, I'm just gonna... Of the three of you all, oh. you are the fastest. Okay. Well, I'm going to fucking obliterate it then. Never mind. It Four. is dead. Well, I'm not done yet. Five. Just shoot at the dead body. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Alright. So, as you were tearing it apart and filling it full of holes, uh, it died about 75% of the way through your attack phase. And it is writhing and spasming on the ground. And as it disintegrates, all it leaves behind is a very large and steaming puddle of purple acid. But you all have uh, won this fight. So... Uh, as, for, as, for your, as for your rewards, uh, please give yourselves 100 uh, main class EXP, 50 subclass EXP, and add... Well, I was going to give you all its face after you killed it, but since you got it beforehand, uh, you already got that part. And that's about it. Cool. 50 XP in. So, it left behind purple soup. Uh, yeah, what about it? Henry casts fire on it just in case. No, 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 no. Before you do that, I'm gonna, like, you know, f flick a bullet casing at it. You do that, and it immediately disintegrates. Yeah, uh, Henry, if you cast fire at a corrosive object, it's going to turn into an explosive. Don't do that. I have an idea. Just leave it alone. I have an idea. Why don't we make bullets out of it for you? Bullets. Yes, yes. How am I going to harvest corrosive material without the proper utilities? Use your digitizer. It doesn't work like that. Wouldn't he need a container for that? Exactly. Can't I make one of stone? Wouldn't it just burn through the stone? No, it's not burning through the floor. Do you have tempered glass? No. Magical stone. <clears throat> GM, what do you think? I'm not going to say no. That's All the right. three! So I cast right. Spike and make a container. Uh, cast and... Spike. 
But roll intelligence. Sure. Cast spike. All right. You create a small box of stone around the mysterious liquid. And while it's still steaming from the inside, and it's quite hot to the touch, for now, it has not melted through. I'll just... I'll just put this in stasis. <laughs> just digitize it while I still can before it melts through. If it, worst case scenario comes, we could just reanimate it over an enemy and drop it. So, what should I call this item? A container full of acid? <laughs> A box full of acid? Um... Yes. An acid trip. A box full of acid. <laughs> acid trip. <laughs> Let, let's go with a box full of acid. All right. So, you want to take care of that. And uh, Drava speaks up. She says, that took a bit long. Um... Let's say that we continue getting a move on here. Yes, fast, please. No more parasites. No more helping. There's just one more thing. What do we do about the guy? Oh, Zero. Get transport. <laughs> Good idea. Um, this looks we'll more like a Regis thing, though. Zeril could get the transport to bring him to Regis faster. Uh, you, you you raise a good point. All right. I mean, doesn't Regis have an ambulance? Uh, I think they're kind of busy with the city right now. They might be. Regis is the head of the medicine district. Like he does oversee all that shit. Yeah. I think he's a he might little be too busy for that. Yeah, with the hospital at the moment, with the current. Yeah, state. let's 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 just call zero. I, you call him this time because he's probably tired of hearing my voice. Henry. Henry goes on the intercom. What now? Zero. Zero. We need uh one transport to the the bar area. We have one man in major. Uh, Kind of ripped apart. Define kind of ripped apart. It's kind of a. He's broader. still alive. I shout at <laughs> Henry's ear. But... He was attacked by a parasite ripping through him. But we have an unstable condition. We need a transport. All right. Sending a transport to your location. Keep keep moving along. Made it to the bar yet? We're almost there. All right, and from there, communication is cut. As you all begin to keep walking, you mm, perception roll, please. Perception. Oh, God. Ah, well then, I can see the future, baby. All right, so Yashua, you you're walking ahead. And you see a drone with a giant Z on the front of it, very quickly making its way to where you all are currently standing. Ah. Uh, oh, Zero's drone. Zero's drone. How tacky. Who and puts from, their name? From the, from the drone, you hear, I heard that. Yeah, sure. I just gives him a thumbs up. <laughs> I am not Zero speaking through the drone, but he gives all of our, all of his drones a form of autonomy. I do not like being insulted. I will kindly ask you to take that back. I'm not insulting you. I'm insulting your owner for having bad taste. I will kindly You're ask great, you to though. take that back. If you insult your my owner, you are therefore insulting me. Yashua just shrugs. 
Anyways, lead the way. Much appreciated, I suppose. Please follow me. And after about a about a five minute walk, <clears throat> it takes you to a, a another door in an alleyway, or what appears to be a door. The drone removes a cloaking device from this particular door to reveal a staircase. And you all walk down that staircase, and you will see a sign. And this sign says the hooked wire. You want to enter inside? Please place your tokens right here. Oh, this kind of looks like the other bar in the first city. Oh, wait, it is the other bar in the first city. Cool. Oh my god, Riku, you just gave me a mini heart attack. I thought that was Snake. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. I'm not gonna do it to you. Dude. You got my hopes up. I thought... I thought we were gonna, like, abandon the... the, the that we gotta cure Henry and go fight a Metal Gear. Yeah, okay. Alright, so... You wanna step inside the bar... You see a man dressed in what appears to be military attire taking an unnecessarily long drag out of a cigarette. You look over to the rest of the patrons that are in there. You see a lizard type woman with the crystal ball. You see a harpy sitting at one end of the bar table. You see someone with a dual, a dual bladed staff at the other end of the bar table and you see who appears to be the owner of this establishment and you see a jukebox and when you entered there was no music playing at all but once you laid eye contact on the jukebox suddenly you begin to hear music I can vibe with this the military guy looks over to you and says who are you how'd you get here who sent you Emerald eyes and Blondie. Blondie with emerald eyes. Oh, okay. Z sent you. Alright. Uh, go over to where the harpy lady is. And she'll direct you from what you need to do next. Alrighty then. And man goes back to his corner. Yeah, sure, it just waves the c cigarette smoke out of, out of his face. <laughs> Henry goes close to the harpy lady. She turns around. So, you must be Zeril's friends, yes? Indeed. <laughs> and she looks at you all, she looks at Dreva, she... Stares for an uncomfortable amount of time in Andreva's eyes. She does the uh -oh. same for Yashua. And she takes one look at Henry and she moves her head away from him so fast you think her neck cracked. Uh, please that follow me. And by the way, my name is Kristen. I have a very bad habit of speaking when an immediate thought comes to my mind, so apologies if I interrupt you a lot. What were you going to say? Nah, no worries. I just don't blame you snapping your neck like your that. Your eyes you saw Henry. are very interesting, and so is your hair. Huh? Bird brain. Oh. Oh. Uh. Thanks. Uh. Your feathers are pretty. <laughs> Why? Thank you. I know. They are a very pretty color. Now then, she lifts her arms and she does a clapping motion. And the drone that led you all here comes back to the forefront. Hello, Kristen. How may I help you? Uh, show them to where they're new 
assisting whatever he called it is, would you? And Mr. Shadow Man, I know you're here somewhere. Please do not bully them. If you need me, I will be standing here, admiring myself one more time. <laughs> Yashua chuckles a little bit at that comment. And the drone flies over to you and says, please follow me. So, what do you guys think the shadow person is that she mentioned? Don't get close to me! I don't know. Jacob says, I don't know. Probably someone good at staying in the shadows or something. Probably a ninja, or... Wait, do ninjas even exist here? Whatever. So if the you're drone... referring to... A person that's capable of stealth and hiding in the shadows and assassinations and all that, and yeah. We do have ninjas as he raises his two hands and just does a little finger motion. Finger? You mean hand. Interesting. Okay, this is your destination. The object should be in sight. Object. Object. This thing? No, not that. It is something else. Is it on the table? Can you all not see it? No. Please focus your eyes. And maybe use a little bit of magic, if you are capable of doing so. And that is the drone's way of saying, roll perception, insight, and wisdom. What do you got to do this to me? <laughs> perception, uh, wisdom... God, am I that brain dead today? Where the hell is wisdom? Perception. And insight, you said? Yep. Wisdom. Okay. Uh -huh. Alright, so after focusing everyone's eyes and doing as the drone said, using a little bit of magic to enhance your eyesight, uh, you can make out the outline of a particular chest that you saw in that portal that Henry ran through and got cursed from. This box is also glowing. It's going a very deep shade of blue. Uh, Henry goes to open it. Don't you dare <laughs> let me, because you're already... Oh, I'm already cursed. I don't want a second curse. Let me open it. How are you I intending... open it. How are you intending to open this? By lifting it. <laughs> the top. Okay. Uh, give me a sleight of hand and a strength roll. Someone joined our session. Mm. Okay. Here. You just barely managed to open the treasure chest. And on the inside, you see someone sleeping. Inside of this chest. What? Henry backs up quickly because he doesn't want to curse anybody. Drava looks inside. What the fuck? I almost cursed this man. How did they fit in? Man, that's clearly a woman. How did... I can't see from back here. <laughs> see a little cute cat girl lean up and she kind of stares at you guys and blinks her eyes and rubs her eyes a few times uh hello hello 
Hi. Do you just normally go around opening up people's chests? People's chests? Do you... Ex okay. Do you normally sleep inside chests often? You know, only when I've had a really good night. I had a great night drinking. I don't... I think I, I think it was a great night. I don't remember. I don't remember. They wouldn't give me a room, so I just decided, you know, why not... Why not in here? Oh, good. Okay. Yashua just rubs his eyes. All right. And from the corner, you hear Kristen excitedly flapping her feathers and says, Ah, hello, Perry. It seems you've woken up. Um, you probably don't remember, but amidst all your drinking, I told you that you've been contacted, or is it contracted? One of those words, I don't really care, to assist in the ongoing crisis in the city. These are your new friends. Have fun. Oh, well, hello. I work well in teams, so this will be fine. Is there a lot of gold? Can I get gil? Can I get money? I just need I just need more liquor. I'm going to be honest. And... <laughs> Let's don't found it around. <laughs> Dra Drava is, is, is trying to come up with something feasible to say but the only thing she can get out is uh, um welcome to the team i guess and he just walks out and goes and gets a drink he almost just killed the person <laughs> and with that yeah you know what i'm gonna go get a drink too <laughs> y'all have now gained a new party member and a heart attack in the process well yeah you had a heart attack in the process and Drava she looks at her again and says uh what was your name again oh um Perry Peridot but I just I go by Perry that works Perry the pirate some people might say you're a pirate Something of the sort. I'm more like a master navigator, but, you know, it's just whatever people want to say. I mean, I, d I don't personally call myself a master navigator, but, you know, I'm, I'm definitely not saying I'm not. You know, I'm, you know, <clears throat> a drink. She's going to climb out of her treasure chest really fast, and she pulls out her little flask and goes to drink from it, but there's nothing inside of it. Uh-huh. And... You see, the woman before you, she speaks, well, my name is Dreva, um, we're kind of dealing with the, uh, war against the cult right now, but, g give me, give me a sec, I got a, I had, I had a call I gotta make. What and, is Dreva wearing? Uh, or like, what does she look like? Uh, Dreva has unnaturally pale skin, her eyes are red. She has jet black long hair trailing down to, say, the center of her back. She has on what appears to be a coat fitting for someone who works on machines but decides to get a little creative with it. Uh, she's wearing your typical kind of boots, so they trail a bit up her a bit up to her knee a little you can see she has on a couple of different rings earrings a necklace on and she has a very long staff the top of which has a crystal on it and the bottom half of which has a very sharp blade attached to it all right all right and as she turns around she puts a finger to her ear and she says uh zero I have a very serious question. What? What do you want? Um. This thing you mentioned that was going to help us just came out of a treasure chest and she was sleeping inside of it. Yeah, and? Is this the. Yep. 100%. <laughs> Get her up to date. I've got other shit to do um 
Oh, and tell Yashua that I snuck uh, a communicator in his pocket. Give that to Perry. When the fuck did you- I'm cutting contact now, goodbye. Okay, um, well. Nice to meet you. Let's, uh, get you up to date on what's going on and act accordingly. And in order to place your token on the map, uh, on the newspaper icon, you can click your character name and just drag it on to the playing field. I I signaled the bar the barkeep to give me two of his strongest drinks possible. Drape is a little too close to Henry. I yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh. So you do that, and you hear Kristen walk behind you. Are you sure you should be drinking on the mission, Mr. Pretty Hair-Eyed Man? I'll be fine, Pretty Wings. If you say- Oh my god, you call my wings pretty, oh thank you. <laughs> if you say so, I'm going to go back to... Um... Doing... Something, actually. Oh, right, I should tell you about where you are. This is a hidden bar called the Hidden Wire, and I, I, that's very repetitive. Um, so this is where people come on invitation only. Are you telling me this? I'm telling you this now because... Oh yeah, no, I know. You know, I know. I stay here a lot. Yeah. Right. I'm a little bit of a mercenary, I guess you could say, maybe. Mm. Right. I should Henry really try to ignores, remember things better, huh? Henry ignores her and just asks for two bottles of rum. Okay. Uh, uh, I got that written down. Uh, Kristen continues her explanation and she says, uh, This is where people come and go when they want to trade information or make not the brightest of trades, but nothing too illegal. Uh, I run this place, I try my best to keep it very hidden, and, um, yeah, whatever Chief says, we do. And, uh, she looks over to the creature behind the bar counter. She shakes her head in a weird motion, and you two have your alcohol. Please remove cool. 400 gil from each of yours total. Sounds good to me. Awesome. Alright. So, well, I take both of the drinks and I give one to Perry as a friendly gesture. Oh, you're my favorite. And I give Perry one whole bottle of rum. <laughs> now you're my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> She's instantly going to put it into her treasure chest and lock the treasure chest and like look around kind of suspiciously as she does it. And Drave says, wait, you... You carry that thing with you? Oh, you don't have one that you carry around with you? How do you take your things with you? I... I put my stuff in a bag and I use a spell to make it small so it can fit in my pocket. Oh, that's smart. Yeah, no, I just kind of... I just kind of carry it. And she's gonna take her tail and just lift... Uh, there's a handle at the top. She's gonna lift it by that handle with her, with her tail. Yashua just takes a sip. How creative. Interesting. And when Draba mm. looks at your tail, she says, Oh! Wait, you're the same race as Cynthia! Oh, is she a little kitty cat too? Yeah, they called it, uh... Uh... Me... Cold... Mm, almost there, yum. You can do it. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'll yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. Um so Have you never seen us? Well to be fair, I'm not from this dimension, and I've only met one since I've been here in the last ten years. Oh, well, we're the best, we're the cutest, obviously. I mean, <laughs> smartest, strongest, you know. Most No humble. argument here. 
she did say that the female Makote were particularly strong and could lift up to 400 pounds with their tails alone. It's not the limit. I've never really weighed it. I don't know. I I'm sure the box isn't that heavy, though. I mean, maybe like a good 200 total. I don't know. I carry my things in it, though, so. You can also make a good, decent melee weapon. Oh, that's true. That's true. I normally don't fight. I kind of just stay on the ship. I, I, I sail a lot, and I kind of just take people places. That's usually my job. You hire me. I sell you to wherever the hell you're trying to go, and then... I usually stay with the ship. I don't like fighting. I'm not a fighter. No, 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 no. Mm. Right. Well, of course. That will change. Takes another swig out of his bottle rum. <laughs> no, no. You, you look like strong uh, men. You know, you you fight. You fight. I, I'll stay back, though. Don't, don't worry. I'll cheer you on. I'll cheer you on, though. Don't worry. We'll have a drink after, though. You know? Um. Uh, well, um. Uh, unfortunately. Uh, with what we're currently doing, that's not really an option. We're as we've sailing. been, we've been fighting for the last, well, to be honest, ever since we got here to the city, and since this day started for about, what, eight hours now? So you're telling me ben, I, got, I got contracted to fight? Yes. I'm 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 gonna need another drink. I'm I'm gonna have a vanilla. I'm gonna have a vanilla. I'm having a panic attack. I am. And That's you... the reason I bought you the bottle of rum. Have fun. Oh my god. That's <laughs> what is that supposed to last? Like 35 minutes? Like. Ugh. Okay, I'll get you another one when you're done. <laughs> you hear uh, Kristen god. speak up. Yeah, I tried to tell you that what you were drinking, but you were too far gone to really understand what I was saying you know, to you. I do vaguely remember swinging my daggers around on the table, saying, I'll slay anything. I do. I feel like that was my last, that was the last memory, though, you know? Then it was just it's all black after that. Oh. Right. <laughs> well, I wonder if she is the type of person that hits harder when she's drunk. I wouldn't know. I'm never sober, so. Oh. And Chris and yep. she flaps the wings and turns around. Well, whatever. My job is done. I'm going to go do something. And when she trails off, she adopts the most intense blank expression on her face as she seems to have completely checked out. She likes me, I swear. She just acts like that. It's like a cute thing that we do, you know. <laughs> Henry goes up to the bar and orders another eight bottles of rum. <laughs> you said yeah, eight? I'm going to have to order a barrel. Yes, eight. <laughs> How uh, much money do you have? That's going to be another 1,600 gil gone. That's, that's not fine to me. Perry's yeah. eyes are like widening as he watches you pull out that yeah, let's money. See, uh, how many barrels we got here? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven barrels. Yeah, I think we'll buy all of that so we could keep our guest here entertained. Yeah, you already are thinking what I was thinking. <laughs> uh, you're buying we'll buy your entire stock. You hear the person behind the bar uh, choke on their own spit and they said you wanna <coughs> you wanna you wanna repeat that I'll buy your entire stock and they reach under the counter and bring out their own drink Oh boy. I'll buy that too. <laughs> I'll just take his drink. I'll buy that too. I thought I'm drinking it. <laughs> okay, let me take one more sip and then you can have it, okay? No. We need right, it. Fine. <laughs> Where did you get this kind of money? If I, you know, might inquire. Well, 
Well, when you work for Zeril and go on his missions, it's usually equals profit. And Henry pulls out one gold coin of Gil. Uh, Yashua, uh, oh, please oh. take off 20,000 Gil from your total. 20? Okay. 20? Uh, yeah, the, the the person behind the counter. Yeah, that's gonna be uh, twenty grand for our, for our entire god Gaia damned stock. All right, here you go. He just digitizes an entire bag of gill, places it on the fucking table. Zero did not say that we were going to cash out today. What the fuck? Uh, the person takes the money. Uh. Tosses you a key and says, "Have fucking fun, I guess." Henry Cri asks for Chrissy. his information. She shouts over to Chrissy. Chrissy, um, we're out of stuff. I'm clocking out early. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, sure, whatever. Um, I guess Yashua, uh, for simplicity's sake, in your inventory. Add the entire stock of the Hidden Wires alcohol. <laughs> so, uh, on my inventory, I'm gonna put entire stock, and for amount, I'm gonna put nine 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 nine. Yeah, do that. <laughs> All right. So while that's taking place, who's gonna do the honors of catching our new friend here up to speed? Drava says that she sips on a non-alcoholic beverage. Perry is already like halfway through the bottle. Well, since Drava, you since you asked and you volunteered, be my guest. Well, I uh, get my new stock ready to go. How about no, Mister Moneybags? How about we start with your names, perhaps? Obviously, your name was, what was it, Dra Drava, Draven, what was it? Drava, yes. Dragon, right. Uh, what about you two? You two what? for money. What, you two, what's your names? Henry the Curse. Well. <laughs> Alright, well, uh, nice to, nice to meet you, meet your acquaintance, you know, and she perks up in, like, her chair. <laughs> Like, she's obviously trying to have better posture currently. And Drava says, Oh, um, by the way, uh, we've kind of met up at a really weird time, because if you look at Henry's forehead, long story short, he's been cursed. Don't touch him, and don't let him touch you. Uh, curse? By what? Should I should I be concerned here? Yes, you should be incredibly concerned because he's been cursed by something that, upon contact, you will be infected by an incredibly malicious demon that, in a week's worth of time, will take over your body if the owner or you are not killed. What was the uh, bar's name again? Hidden Wire. And what about his body? Should we? Should, are we going to kill him in a week? Like, oh like what's the plan here? He currently has a week and five days left to live if we do not take care of the person who conjured up this curse and brought it to this plane of existence. Would Perry, like, know anyone that can give information on, like, who the person is or anything like that? I would hope so. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she, like, she knows a lot of people, so... Uh, for that, I am going to say, uh, roll history. Ooh, hopefully it goes well. How do I roll that? I do not remember how to use this website. <laughs> uh, on your sheet where it says uh, your skills and all that stuff, uh, you're just yeah. going to click the actual thing that says history. Then something's going to pop up saying normal oh. rolling. That's easy. Okay. Don't mind me. I'm in the back uh, taking all of the <laughs> fucking stock. Uh, I forgot to uh, turn off um, whisper, always whisper rolls to GM, but she got a uh, motherfucking nat 20 with a zero <laughs> modifier to her history roll. Oh, shit. 
Okay. That's their base. <laughs> so, you know for a definitive fact that the person who brought this curse into this plane of existence has not only have a very high rank in the cult, it is also the owner of several other curses that people have been afflicted by. She's not drunk enough to remember this at the moment or say anything to them. <laughs> She's just kind of like, oh, that seems, you know, yeah, that seems sucky. Yeah, I'm, gl I'm glad that's that's you and not and not me. Hmm. Yashua oh, just shouts from the stock. Yo, they got Jack Daniels! <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So let's say that time wise. I'm gonna walk over as well and start drinking the Jack Daniels as well. Alright. So let's say that uh, time wise, about, about 40 minutes of sudden R&R &R goes by. And Drava finishes her 18th non-alcoholic drink. <laughs> and she says, um, I think it's about high time we continue on and make our way back to, what did he call it? A temporary investigation zone? And reach a chats with the lizard with the crystal ball. Uh, what is it that you would like to know, my unfortunately cursed not friend? Would you happen to know where the guy who cursed me is? In that little magic ball of yours? You are asking the right question to the wrong woman. <laughs> You're a woman. <laughs> uh, hey, what, what was your name again? What, Henry? Was that your name? Henry? Yep. Hun, hun Hungry, that's what I am. Hungry. I need some food. Oh, God. Oh, uh, no, about that curse. Yeah. I feel like, maybe, don't quote me, I'm not the most quotable. I feel like I might maybe have heard of possibly some others being cursed similar, but I don't know much. I know it's from, uh, well, you know, I don't want to give information that I don't know, but a cult, does a cult say anything to you? Does that ring any bells, perhaps? Been here for 40 minutes and you know about the cult well no, i know things uh, about a cult i've heard things around the city like i said i'm a mercenary people they hire me they talk they gossip i'm i'm so fun to be around i'm always in the bars you know hanging out partying all all of that i hear things i've heard of people being cursed from a cult. pulls out 100 but... gold gill coins and starts shaking them so where Ooh. um you know mm, i don't seem to remember for that price i feel like you know 1000 gil you know i'm starting to remember <laughs> it's you know i have heard uh no i actually don't remember oh god um you know maybe in a forest or something i'm not sure you know but i definitely have heard things 2000 gil <laughs> um would she know like a <laughs> location the, the, the more they raise the price the more you are inclined to just blurt out that this particular individual is still in the city Somewhere. Um, yeah, no, he's he's here. He's here. Oh she, I mean I'm not sexist. It could be a woman, I guess. I don't know. Uh this individual, you know, they're here in the city. They're in the city, they're in the city. And then she grabs the, or reaches at least for the coins as like fast as she can. <laughs> and he pulls back the coins and moves back. Hurry up or else these are going to be gone. That's all I know though. I know that there's other people who've been cursed similarly to you, and I know it's from some kind of cult leader or something. Nobody's been able to track the guy down, but, uh, you know, people are dying then because I don't think anyone's found him. Or at least if they have, I don't know about it. That's all I know. I promise. And she, like, reaches out both of her hands and gives, like, a very, you know, uwu sad face, like, waiting for her gold. Dreva puts a hand on your shoulder and she hands you what was the last number you said uh, 2, hand, 200 she hands you 2500 gil just just take this we can 
with who? We can discuss how much you really know later, but I, for one, am satisfied with what you do know, and I very much want to act on this information. I don't know what part of the city. I mean, I know some parts are better than other parts of the city, I guess, but for all I know, this person could be part of a high council, and I don't know. I don't know where he's at. I just know he's here, so that narrows it down. You're welcome. I'm Do you have cool. a name? Do you mean a high occult leader? I mean, yeah, he could be part of a cult. He could be part of uh, other organizations. I don't know. I know he's part of a cult. I don't know who he is, though. He could be someone else. I don't know. I'm, I am I know more about the ocean, you know, sailing. I know more about those things, less about what happens within the city. I just have rumors and hearsay. Hmm. All right. And with that interaction said and done out of the way, you all look amongst yourselves and you agree to make your way back to the nightclub where at least three of you just were. And Kristen says, uh, oh hey, I see you're leaving. Um, be safe. Don't die. Come spend more money here. Tell, tell Zero I said I like his hair. And Cynthia, bye. Take care, pretty wings. She, she, she brings her, her wings up to her face and tries to hide her face from you. In like a blushy type manner. Ooh, Yashua got a girlfriend. <laughs> Yashua is a smooth criminal, <laughs> although he doesn't intend to be. All right. Henry just says, "Don't break her arm." <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Alright, so, you all leave the bar, and as you all leave, you walk through a gate of sorts, and you and all of your items that are with you become see-through, and what? it lasts up until you physically leave um, where the building is. And as you all are back outside, you begin to backtrack your way to the nightclub area. I'll move you all right back here. Yashua materializes a bottle of rum. Can I get a refill, Yashua? He materializes another and just tosses it at you. Perry's just gonna hold out her flask, like, just waiting for it to be filled. <laughs> Henry comes over and pours a little bit into her flask. Just a drop. Uh, that's it. Uh, don't you... Th this is Draven talk. Don't you think you guys have probably had enough by now? Oh, this is my usual. Don't you worry about me. Maybe the little baby's over here. You see, Draba. Your usual? Yeah. You... I, I mean, pretty usual. Yeah. Yashua yeah, explains to Draba, you see, the benefits of being an Eidolon, you can't get drunk. Oh, right. You're not human. I. Yeah, I'm gonna have to remember that from now on. That's, that's, that's great. Henry pulls down his rum with the blizzard. Ooh, smart. <laughs> you, would you like a cool down? Ooh, cool nah, down. it's okay. They're, they're, they're already naturally cold in stasis. Stasis? Well, I don't have anything to do that. Way. Do it to mine, do it to mine. And she holds out her flask again. <laughs> She's obviously very impressed. Perhaps the little flask and it gets cold. Oh, wow, I like you. Right. 
uh, Henry, from where you are standing, please do a wisdom do a wisdom roll, and then do a Constitution save. Wisdom. Don't tell me the parasites oh, no. collide. That's not what's happening. If the Diablo. parasite survived, I get another it's free Diablo stuff out of talking to me. He wants me to hurt people again. <laughs> <laughs> so, once again, you hear a whisper. Something menacing. And it says, Hand it over. Let me help you destroy everything. Um, you want to do that constitution save, buddy? Constitution. I would like you to uh, thank the dice gods, because if you hadn't rolled that 10, oh, would have been bad, bruh. So you hoping for a critical failure when the Diablo whispers to him, so I have a reason to kill him. Well, the reason I had him do a constitution saving roll was because after that whisper, he felt a a scratching, clawing feeling in his right arm. Almost as if oh, no. Diablos was trying to force him to wield his staff in his hands and cast some form of violent magic, but because he successfully resisted him, although the tingling, uneasy feeling still remains in his arm, he did not obey Diablos. But now, now I will ask you to roll perception. All of us, or just me? Everybody. Okay. Mm. Perception. I was going to say, is <laughs> that <Nat> one? <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Uh, you all make out the thinnest outline of some form of a creature standing right next to Henry. Oh. And when you focus in on it, Andreva and Yasha both shout at you to fucking move. Oh. Henry jumps back. And the other creatures that are in the area come into now in plain sight, as they were hiding and waiting for you to lower your guard. And oh boy. The green creature says, Well, shit. He managed to, or rather, his dumb looking friends managed to see us, and well, now I don't have a head to display on my wall. That fucking sucks. Oh well. Still gonna try to kill you anyway. Don't oh. worry, I'll display yours on my wall soon enough. Harry's mm. looking back and forth between you two talking, like, very quickly. And she starts breathing heavier and heavier. Whoa, oh, big small man thinks he's tough, huh? As the one with the hands clasped together says, Now, now, do not get ahead of yourself. You are here for one thing and one thing only, and as to follow my orders... And dispose of our threats. Do you understand? And when it says that, you can see small specks of light begin to come forth from that person's hands. As you can see, the green creature uh, subsequently become electrocuted and says, All right, okay, okay, all right, just don't do that and don't send me back, okay? <laughs> ha ha, you got electrocuted. Ha, you're her little bitch. <laughs> Oh, uh, big boss man got you in a tight leash, huh? 
Roll intimidation. Who? <laughs> uh, Yashua. Okay, good. Right. Oh, nice. Uh, you say that, and he cranes his head in a manner that he initially was going to glare at you, but upon making eye contact, he flinches. As for the blue-haired individual that looks to be quite devious and also <clears throat> uh, a bit angry, says that God damn it, I don't. None of us have time for this. Kill them so we can leave. So we can continue with what the fuck we came here to do. We have Kill. a city to burn, and I would like to see that city burn. Did he say kill? Did someone, can someone confirm? Did he say kill? Who, who are you killing? Who are you? Who are these people? Does anyone know who they are? They're here to kill us. Kill for what? What happened that you need to kill someone over? That's very definitive. The Henry starts drinking again. The blue-haired cre uh, humanoid looks at you in a manner that says, "Are you fucking serious?" She's and then he point says, at him with her flask as well, and like glare at him as he glares at her. And then he says, "These." ungrateful bastards have been going around causing issues preventing us from completing our goal being that we have been working tirelessly to bring these Gaia damned sheeps to our form of salvation so that we can use them for a better cause so that way we can protect the planet Oh my god, they're just puppets. Uh, I believe you mean Dimension, as the thing we're trying to get rid of kind of eats those, not necessarily planets. And the mask creature says, well, the both of you just shut the fuck up already. Nah, this is why I hate working with people. Yeah, but you were summoned from the same place I was. That doesn't fucking mean that I like you. And when he says that, he grabs the green creature by the throat and holds him up in the air. I just feel like nobody needs to die. I mean, you know? 50 gil if you snap his neck. Oh. <laughs> and a bottle of rum. Make it two. Make it two. We have, we have plenty. Two. Two would work. Two. All three of you, please roll persuasion. A drum. I will give you a drum of a barrel of rum. Oh God. <laughs> persuasion. Okay, let's see. There was my single nat twenty that will ever be used ever. <laughs> Back to one. I'm telling you now, uh, what I wrote on my side, Henry saved you all by one point. Hell yeah. <laughs> Alright. The first man is keeping us alive. <laughs> so, you say that, he looks at his comrade, he looks at you all, and he, very quickly, snaps his neck. He drops him to the floor. Harry's eyes are just gonna widen. And the two mage-like looking people says, Are you... Really? Why, 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 why are you fighting? Why, why are you fighting your fellow comrade? Do you want to go back to hell? Yes, actually. I, I didn't ask to fucking be here. You bastards are summoning us for, for, for no reason. Making us do some shit we didn't agree to do. Like, this is y'all's problem. I don't want anything to do with this. So... If you want to send me back, please, by all means, send me. Now. Henry walks over with the two bottles of rum. Slowly. Just gonna place the 
barrel of rum yep. right here next to the dead body and just walk back. And there you go, you earned this. As soon as Yashua walks back, Henry throws the two bottles of rum and throws fire at it all. Next to the big giant keg of alcohol. You wanted health fire! <laughs> Uh, wait, I'm playing play, wrong song, wrong song. So, when you did that, the green creature was in the process of springing back up to its feet, and it just so happened to stand the moment the fire hit the rum and it exploded in his face. Oh. He is very, very angry with you. And you are its current target. And Good. The fight, fight, fight has begun. So this thing is still alive? Oh yeah. The purplish oh, one is neck snapped? No, the green one has neck snapped. Uh -huh. So he still can survive with his neck snap? Uh, no, he never died. He just had his neck snapped. He is oh, currently, he is standing upright on his feet. With a neck twisted, probably. Yes. Oh. How can He's you stand with a broken neck? <laughs> what kind of anomaly? <laughs> well, I was a, a demon beast. summoned from hell, so I'm not, you know, normal. Ah, fair enough. Well, if we have to take out abnormal creatures with abnormal other okay. creatures, I have an idea. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. You said that you've been summoned. So what happens if we kill those two mages? Would, would you be set free? Um, depending on how you kill them, uh, why are you telling them that? <laughs> what? We he asked me a question. Henry looks over at Yasha. We need one alive. Oh, I like these demons. They're pretty chill. No, they, they don't want to be here. <laughs> they don't want to be here. They don't want to fight. So, I say we just indulge them and kill the mages. Uh, correction. The one with the mask speaking. I'm the only one that doesn't want to fucking be here. Uh, I don't care about Green Man over here. I don't care about any of the demons that they summoned. I don't want to be here. So the purplish one doesn't want to be here. Okay. Okay, so... I call dibs on Edgelord over there as I point out the blue hair. Okay. I have a plan. Well, uh, it is Yashua's turn to begin combat. So while he's and doing that, I'm going to make my sense. ability. Mm -hmm. So I want to like appear behind him. How do I do that without him noticing? Gonna have to roll for some high speed. Um. Given that you are right in front of him, you're gonna need a pretty sick, nasty stealth roll to do that. Ah, right. You're also in a very well lit area. I am too. Mm, fuck it, I'm just gonna shoot at him. Riku, did you make the little icon from what we discussed last week? I did not, because I did not factor that into this session. Okay. Alright, so I'm just gonna... Hold on. Okay. Oh. I gotta get. Okay. Reload, reload. Reload. Three. Four. One, two, three, four, and 
gonna activate my energy shields. Shining Word. Do I still have Shining Word on me? From nope. last it's, uh, per battle. Okay, it's per battle. Okay, you attacking the blue haired mage? Yep, I'm, I'm attacking the edge lord. Alright. You will have dealt 1,638 damage to the enemy. Nice. Okay, who are you casting Shining Ward on? On myself. It's okay, I'm already doing the... the barrier. Okay. Now, in... next Wait turn order, because we go by speed around here, it is Perry's turn. Oh, Ooh, no. Perry fast? Um, yeah. Um, I don't okay, know I'm what... gonna move myself here so you can see my health bar. Um, can I use Shadow Sting? Uh, you, ha you gotta move within melee range, but yeah. Oh, yeah. How much movement do we get? Uh, you can move as far as you want per action. Oh. You get okay, five nice. actions a turn, and moving takes one action. Okay, well, she's just gonna run up behind this guy. And, uh... Good choice. I'll give you a bottle of rum for that. <laughs> it's supposed to be four D five. Uh, actually, it's six D five with my speed and attack. Mhm. Mm yeah, I I got I it. Think I did it right. Yeah. All right. So looking at that, that. Oh, half of my attack actually. Or D5. Okay, rolls. Alright. So that's attack one. And the enemy's AC has dropped by. Oh, wait. The enemy's AC has not dropped. Correction. Oh. Uh, how many, like, attacks do we get per turn? Three uh, more acts. Yeah. It, it's not. Based on, you, so normally, uh, you get five actions. You can use those actions to attack, heal, move, do whatever. But because you moved and you attacked, you have three actions left. Gotcha. Um, can I do the same attack again? Oh, okay, yeah. Why is it green? What the hell? There you I go. Because I want to drop his AC. Alright. Wow. Three fives on that. Okay, now his AC has gone down by 2%. Um, and... Oh, we're playing that game? Alright, I'll play that game too. We're just gonna nerf their defenses? Am I... can I use my Noctis stuff as well? Mm-hmm. Alright. So even though you're already within, uh melee range, you throw your weapon, either your your Almost your engine blade or your daggers right at his face, and you teleport right in front of him again. One more action. Yep. Oh, I also had another. Well, I'll, I'll wait till we're not in battle. <laughs> You got one action left. Oh, do I? Huh? You moved, you did three attacks. <clears throat> Excuse oh, me. Okay. Um, and then, uh, let me just, I don't know. What's this one? I don't remember. Uh, that is an attack <laughs> where you throw your weapon sky high right above the enemy. Oh, yeah, I see it. I, I opened up the thing. Yep. Yeah, we'll do that one. That one's cool. Style points. Alright, huh. so you throw one of your weapons straight up, and you warp up to them, and you come flying down right on his head. I'm just teleporting around this guy. Oh my god. Alright. 
you have dealt a grand total of 890 points of damage to the enemy. I feel so OP because I'm used to just like normal TNT. Yeah, shout out but to- You did three points of damage, woo! <laughs> shout out to not normal D&D around these parts. <laughs> All right. Next up is Drava, and she is going to open up with casting a ruin on the blue-haired mage bastard, and then she is going to. Uh -oh. And she's going to look at Perry, and she is going to get a very mischievous glint in her eye. She is going to cast a temper spell on her. Ooh. So it was two actions, and she's going to use uh, two more actions to cast Blizzard. And then she is going to use uh, Patera on Perry. Okay, and now let me add all this up. Also, uh, I have a habit of saying this quite often, but when I'm like taking the time to add stuff up, feel free to have, like, in-battle banter. Okay. Can I have in-battle question instead? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, how does Limit Break work? Like, when are we allowed to do it? How often? Uh, when you have... So if you accumulate a thousand Limit Break energy, you can pop off and use it as many times as you want in a fight. But you have to have the respective energy in order to do that. How do we earn energy? Every time you hit something, every time you get hit, and at the end of your turn, you get one point. Uh, is there, do I just track this myself, like in my thing? Uh, yeah, that is not the right icon. Uh, yeah, but I have in the rule book, um, for new people, I'll help you out and track it for you. Mm. So, with your damage, if you're doing 850, 10% of oh, you have 86 points of energy. All right. Oh wait, how much damage did I do to him? You said uh, 1600? You did 1658, I believe, and 10% of that is 167. I mean right. 166, because of the 0. 0.8. And what did I do with the fire explosion? I gotta scroll back up for that. Sorry, I'm trying to get all my questions out, like, as fast as possible so that I'm not asking questions every fight. <laughs> uh, you're good. Uh, Fine, how many we, we have? 37. 7? 37. Not including the first fight. No. I gotta re-add what Drava did for her damage. I like that the abilities feel a lot cooler than D&D. &D. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just because I hate D&D &D combat so much, but at least I can like teleport around, that's fucking cool, as opposed to like, I firebolt every fucking turn. Like... Right. Uh, Drava dealt 421 points of damage. It is now Henry's turn. Okay. I'm going to cast Cure on Perry. So she's healed. Did she take damage? Did I? Yeah. No. Didn't when? you get hit by Blizzard? <laughs> oh. No. Who did he use Blizzard on then? The ki the caster. She used it on this bastard. It was her teammate, girl. Her, right her teammate. Yeah, but she didn't okay, use it as an AOE. She just used a single target. Okay, I'll just cast on myself because I've been hurt this whole damn time and I haven't healed myself. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I've been only at 900 and still my full HP. Four. Okay, I'm 
back to full. Alright. That's action Eric. one. And since they're all cluttered together... Let's see. Careful with the friendly fire. We just got a new party member, it doesn't mean you could go on killing her. <laughs> no, no, no. I have a if new skill that I want to test out. Because if I get hit, I could counter now. With physical. Okay, I want to target this guy. The oh, one in one? green. Okay. The green mage. I'm going to cast... Since he's farther away, I'm going to cast fire on him. Just let me know if he gets burned. Okay. Wow. I'm really whiffing on those burns. <laughs> Except for the last one. Alright. Uh, the poor bastard is currently on fire, but he seems completely unfazed by it. Oh, and all those are dual casted. So I do half the damage of each one, too. I have to set that up. That uh, Everything has a second. Say that again? Because I could dual cast now. Uh huh. You you do you have to cast a thing normally before dual cast can take place. Did I have something set up for that that it does it dual casted? Uh, I'll have to fiddle around with roll, with roll with roll twenty to try and set that up, but we can figure it out. It says that I could dual cast any spell. I don't know if I have to set up a separate damage for it, so it just pops up like that. We'll, we'll, we'll figure that out later. Okay. So new, dual cast allows you to cast a spell at a fourth of the power and half the MP after using an action to cast a spell. The dual casted spell also does not consume an action. Yeah. That's the confusing looking part. We'll figure it out. So, you have to use a spell to cast another spell. Yes. So, yeah. So basically, every time I use a spell, it casts a secondary spell at one force of the power. Yes. Okay, so that's it for me. Alright. Add all that up. I added the wrong one. So basically, we have an ally demon at the moment who wants to go back to hope. Not the words I would use. <laughs> Gabe speaks. Well, given that he's not really trying to fight us, I wouldn't use the ally button. But he's also, again, not trying to. I don't know. We'll just say he's in the middle. He's deciding who's winning the fight right now. Right. Did you have to blow up all that liquor, though? It's a waste. You have enough. You have a whole fucking huge amount. It'll last about a week. Oh, uh, Henry, you did uh, 572 damage. And it's a thousand for our limit break, right? Yeah. So 10% of that is 57. Mm -hmm. Plus the 37 from before. Yep. Now, for 
Uh, for you and Yashua, y'all have been here long enough. I'm not. I'm not gonna keep track of it for y'all. But uh, our, yeah, our, fuck you guys. our new friend gets five free sessions. After that, she's <laughs> on her own. All right. So now with it being the enemy phase, uh, the one that was just recently attacked in the green tunic, he just casually looks at his shoulders being on fire. And he says, well, this is a, uh, a slight inconvenience. As he scratches his head, and as he does so, you can see little rain clouds appear over his shoulders and the fire is extinguished. Is he wet? His shoulders are. Uh, the masked creature says, you know what? I'm not going to deal with this, so therefore, I will not. And from where he is standing, he crouches down and he leaps backwards on top of the building behind him. Never ask for this shit. Y'all deal with this. Not my problem. And the blue haired one gets quite angry as he turns to Perry and he casts... <clears throat> a ruin spell, but because of Perry's speed stat, poor bastard has to roll to try and hit her, <laughs> and he misses. Fuck you. <laughs> and in his frustration, he throws a ruin spell at the ground, and the orb pierces through the ground, but. Seemingly nothing happens as a result of that. And as for the green guy, he's going to run up and attempt to punch Henry in the face. Uh oh. Oh. Let's counter this shit. Careful, Shrek's gonna punch you. Yeah, but if he hits me, I do repose it. That's so only at level 5. No, there's the basic one, isn't it? No, that's a melee attack. Uh, dang it. He misses so spectacularly that he is on the other side of uh, Henry now. Oh, okay, he's a demon. He won't get cursed. <laughs> and the green tunic wearing individual, he looks at what appears to be a watch and he says we we do not have the particular time frame to be fooling around with you all so I will bring this to a hasty end he says as he unclasps his hands and he pulls out a small green vial oh god he drinks this vial. Gross. His arms slowly lift into the air, almost as if he's lurching forward. As he rises up little by little, you can see three green orbs swirl around him as high amounts of energy begin spewing forth from the man's feet. And he conjures a staff in his hand. He says, this will end as quickly as it began. And with that, session will end for today. Mother... Dude! I'm hitting the stop recording button in 10 seconds. Get your fake sponsorships out now. <laughs> Bro, you, you, you can't, you can't. Like and subscribe or I will fucking, I, I don't know. I, I'm dry I'm, here. I'm Henry, you take right over. Now. I'll curse you. <laughs> there you go. God. All right, there you go. I join and this is what you do to me. <laughs> and now I've hit the stop recording button.